Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about Judy Garland's diet. As Dorothy the Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland cemented her place in Hollywood as a beloved icon. The wholesome Kansas farm girl who only wants to return home after finding herself in the land of Oz, Dorothy was sweet and caring, and audiences were smitten with her from the first scene. But the lead up to and making up the 1939 classic was a far more treacherous landscape for the teenager to navigate than the fictional perils of Oz. Garland would endure excruciatingly long work hours and a studio system that turned a blind eye to, and in fact often encouraged the use of substances such as stimulants to keep performers working and sleeping pills to ensure that they would be able to rest. By the time the 17-year-old Garland finished Filming Oz, she was already addicted to barbiturates and amphetamines. Her use of the drugs had started before the actors slipped into those ruby slippers, in part due to the studio bosses who demanded she remain thin and energetic, enough to cope with the arduous days of filming. Substance abuse would become an issue she would fight the remainder of her life until she died of an accidental overdose in 1969 at the age of 47, leaving behind her three children, Liza Minnelli, Lorna and Joey Luft. Five marriages and an artistic legacy often overshadowed by the tragedies of her short life. Judy Garland's mother was the first person to give her pills. Born Frances Ethel Gum in Grand Rapids on June 10, 1922, Garland was pushed to perform at a young age by her mother Ethel, a frustrated vaudeville performer who put her daughters on the stage as early as possible. At the tender age of two and a half, Garland was in the spotlight performing alongside her sisters. In later life, Garland would remember her mother as a real wicked witch of the West. According to Get Happy, The Life of Judy Garland, biographer Gerald Clark, Garland's mother was the first to provide pills both for energy and sleep to her not yet 10-year-old daughter. Studio execs called her fat little pig with pigtails. Signed to MGM as a teenager, she appeared in more than two dozen films for the studio, many with the co-star Mickey Rooney himself as a teen at the time. Under contract, she would constantly be scrutinized by studio bosses, particularly in reference to her weight. Garland appeared in her first feature film in 1936 at the age of 14, a musical comedy about football coaches called Pigskin Parade. Studio head Louis B. Meyer and the MGM bosses were reportedly already worried about any extra weight on the diminutive star, going so far as to refer to her as a fat little pig with pigtails. Placed on what would be the first of many diets, Garland's food intake was severely restricted and monitored closely. To maintain her weight, Meyer insisted she consume only chicken soup, black coffee, and cigarettes along with pills to reduce her appetite. Most of her teen and adult life, she had been on either Benzedrine or a diet or both. Garland's third husband, Sid Luft, wrote in his memoir, Judy and I, My Life with Judy Garland, just four feet, 11 and a half inches, she could be underweight and still appear heavy or out of proportion on screen. Known as pep pills in the industry, Garland wasn't alone in being forced to take the drugs. Her co-star Rooney, the two appeared in films together such as Babes in Arm, Love Finds Andy Hardy, and Strike Up the Band, was also forced to consume them. Both Garland and Rooney were stretched to the limit for the studio, and neither spoke of what they endured until years later. They had us working days and nights on end. They'd give us pills to keep us on our feet long after we were exhausted. Then they'd take us to the studio hospital and knock us out with sleeping pills. Mickey sprawled out on the bed and me on the other. Garland told biographer Paul Donnelly, then after four hours, they'd wake us up and give us the pep pills again so we could work 72 hours in a row. Half of the time we were hanging from the ceiling, but it was a way of life for us. A year prior to The Wizard of Oz, studio managers were sending memos to each other detailing Garland's food intakes. By the time cameras began rolling on the film, Garland was already in an upper downer drug cycle. Despite being prescribed, Garland called herself a walking advertisement for sleeping pills. At age 17, Garland was a fleshy teenager heading into early womanhood. To ensure Dorothy's wholesome young appearance wouldn't be questioned by the audience, the studio resorted to strapping Garland's breast down and utilizing corsets to evoke a slim silhouette on top of a steady diet of drugs and very little food. 
That Garland produced such an incredible performance under such extreme circumstances only highlights her innate talents. Yo-Yo dieting and reliance on pills was now so firmly established that Garland would struggle with it, both along with heavy alcohol consumption for the rest of her life. And she says, at times I have been pretty much a walking advertisement for sleeping pills, Garland said in her later years. Even though pills come on doctor's prescriptions, as mine did, they can be a tremendous strain on the nervous systems. I do think my mother was a victim of the studio system. Garland's daughter, Lorna, told Studio 10 in 2017. But it also gave her the ability to channel her talent to all of us. It was a real double-edged sword. And a year prior to her death at the age of 47 due to an accidental overdose, Judy Garland was living in the glare of the media spotlight as she had done for almost her entire life. But yet the focus was not as celebratory as it had been when the 17-year-old already seasoned performer became an international star when she graced the screens as Dorothy in 1939 The Wizard of Oz. During the intervening years between Oz and her 1969 London shows, Garland had experienced soaring career highs and tragic personal lows. Following a string of hit MGM movies, she toured relentlessly made numerous Hollywood comebacks, was twice nominated for an Academy Award, and was the first woman to win the Grammy for Album of the Year for her live 1961 recordings, Judy at Carnegie Hall. By 1968, years of addiction to upper and downer prescription pills and heavy alcohol abuse had taken a toll on her body and voice. A mother of three from four marriages, Garland has spent her life dieting and binging, her weight yo-yoing and attempts to please studio executives. Her LA Times obituary said she had been plagued by illness throughout her life and had suffered from hepatitis, exhaustion, kidney failure, nervous breakdowns, near-fatal drug reactions, overweight, underweight, and injuries suffered in falls. Due to mismanagement and embezzlement, any money she once had was gone and she owed hundreds of thousands of dollars in back taxes to the IRS. Garland had tried to end her life on numerous occasions. In a desperate financial state, she made what would be her final New York appearances at the Palace Theatre in July, performing sold shows with her children Lorna and Joey Luft and from her marriage to former manager Sidney Luft. The majority of Garland's earnings from the shows were reportedly seized for back taxes. In August, she performed in front of an estimated crowd of 100,000 on the Boston Common before returning to New York for two more shows at Madison Square Garden's Felt Form Theatre in December. Arriving at London's Heathrow Airport on the eve of 1969 for her Talk of the Town run, Garland was immediately handed a legal injunction to stop her from appearing in the shows, claiming she was still under contract to two American business behind her. Garland made her final concert appearance on March 25th, 1969 in Copenhagen, Denmark, performing a set list almost identical to her Talk of the Town concerts. Deans discovered Garland dead in the bathroom of their rented Muse house in London on the morning of June 22nd. Her cause of death was ruled as an accidental overdose that she ingested over a long period of time and that had no evidence to suggest that she had committed suicide. Garland died 12 days after her 47th birthday. So I don't know if any of you guys saw the movie Judy that I think it came out last fall and I thought it was a really good movie kind of showcasing uh, Judy Garland's kind of state of mind on her final days and I thought Renee Zellweger did a really good job in portraying Judy Garland so if you haven't seen that movie I highly recommend it. It's just so sad to think. It's crazy because when you look at photos of her you would, I thought she was way older.